Now, if we were newer readers and we were slowing down, we'd probably really read it, right? But instead, our brains go, bam, snap. I know what that's supposed to say because I know what it usually seems like that. I see what I expect to see. Pretty cool. Except that we often do that with humans, right? We see what we expect to see rather than what's really there. We see the poor performer, so we don't even notice anything that the person does well, right? Or maybe we have a stereotype um, that a, a thug. We see a young man wearing a hoodie, and we label him a thug, and we know what can happen then, right? It is tragic. It can be very, very tragic. So what we are trying to do is really see people for who they are, to respect, to look again to respect, okay? And that's how we do it, right? We need to understand what's happening so that we can change it. This is not about guilt, this is not about blame. At Mosaic, we call guilt, blame, and defensiveness peace blockers. They do not help us to solve problems. It is part of being human. Our brains work this way. The key is to understand that we do this so that we can catch ourselves and change it and really reach through those barriers and see people for who they are. So that's what we're trying to do in everything that we do with the Mosaic Project. We're trying to break down the pyramid of hate by dismantling it step by step, right? But not just dismantling it, also transforming it. So here we have, it might be a little hard to read back there, we have the pyramid of hate and the pyramid of peace. So in Mosaic, we start right here at the bottom if separation, if segregation is the foundation of war, violence, genocide, then it follows the connection is the foundation of peace. So all we start, really, the basis of it is just getting people talking to each other, just connecting. And once they've connected and they've heard each other's stories, as Tracy said, an enemy is one whose story you haven't heard. Right? So once, and somebody once told me we should change that to a friend who is a friend whose story you haven't heard. So once they connect, they start to become friends, they start to respect, to look again. Then they're ready to empathize. We're ready to empathize, to really put ourselves in other people's shoes and really think about how other people are feeling. And then we're ready to acknowledge different perspectives. And this one is huge. Being able to acknowledge that there are other valid perspectives that are different from our own. So everybody point at the ceiling and make your finger go clockwise. Like there's a clock on the ceiling and your finger is following it in the shape of a clock. So we've got it. Now keep pointing at the ceiling. Keep your finger go clock, keep your finger going clockwise. And now bring it down. Keep it going, keep it going. Still point up and bring it under your nose and look down at it. Which way is it going? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're gonna be doing this someday. <laughs> so which way is it going? Is it going counterclockwise or clockwise? Depends on how you look at it. It depends on how you look at it. And when you get that, you are really ready for conflict resolution. Because true conflict resolution is not about who's wrong or right. True conflict resolution is really about trying to understand other people's perspectives. And as we say at Mosaic, as Tracy said, the key behind that, and I want to demonstrate this again because I think this is so key. I think if we all got this, it really, really can change the world. Can I have, um, can I have Sarian and Marmalade's assistance for this? You don't, you don't even have to say anything, Marmalade. But the idea is that the, the principle behind conflict resolution is it is not the two of us against each other. Not against each other. There you go but the two of us against the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Well, how everything is, is, right? All of us working against the problem, not against each other. Imagine if Congress could get that idea. <laughs> right? One of my dreams is that our children's board of directors goes to Washington and teaches them a little bit about conflict resolution. <laughs> how this can work, not just between individuals, but between groups of people and between nations, right? And we see now at the Mosaic Project that this works after working with over 25,000 individuals in our programs all together, we see that it works. 
And it is people in this room who have made it possible to do everything that we've done. It is people each year in this room who have stepped, us, have stepped up to support us that have made that possible. So I want to thank you and thank you for being here. It is because of you that we have made many miracles happen. For example, we got a curriculum and training director because of the people in this room. So I'm going to stand before you here today hoping for another miracle and tell you where we're headed. And as I said, I've never been so excited to do that. Our amazing, energized, incredible group of board of directors just went through a huge strategic planning process. And I'm going to show you where we're going. We clarified our goals. We clarified, we clarified where we're headed. So this is what we got. We got step number one. We do want to expand, but first we got to strengthen our core. We got to be as strong as we can be right here. We want all of our programs super strong, our youth leadership project, our mosaic consulting project, our in-school projects we want in every partner school that we work with, all 25 partner schools that we work with. We want to be strong, not just programmatically, but structurally and financially. So that's where we get number one, hire a full-time development director. Now some of you might be saying, what is a development director? It's a full-time fundraiser. There's no glitz and glam here. I know this is not the kind of thing that people always get excited about supporting, but here's the thing. Well, a development director is not about glitz and glam. It can get us glitz and glam, <laughs> right? So we want to invest in that so that we can go further and be stronger financially. Next, we gotta retain our partner school with all the budget cuts going on some of our long-term partner schools, even though we have a very generous sliding scale, some of our, our lowest income schools are now saying that they can't afford to contribute anything. So we need to raise even more money than ever before to keep our current partner schools. And then we, this one is a little bit glitzy, glammy, we need to find a stable home. Where we are now, we can't run programs year round for all various reasons. And we even wrote a little bit about what we're looking for in your programs. And if you uh, have any needs, you just come talk to me. But we want a stable outdoor school where we can run our programs all year long, no matter what the weather is, and where we can have our amazing, brilliant seasonal outdoor school staff have full-time jobs. Woo! Yeah. 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 and families, imagine family camps where the students teach their parents what they've been learning, okay? So all of that is about strengthening our core, and then we'll be ready to expand. Then we'll be ready to test our mosaic model, because we believe that there isn't a place out there that doesn't need the work that we do. And I think that's why, even though we're a small organization, we get requests from as close as Santa Cruz and Chico, and as far away as New York and Atlanta and Egypt to bring mosaics there. And we even have people right now, there's a camp in Illinois and a camp in Monterey, Mexico that use our curriculum as a basis. And we have former staff that are in Japan and China and Brazil and Peru right now using mosaic lessons to teach. And luckily we have our curriculum guide over there at the Merchandise Table and a CD to help do that. But imagine when we can have outdoor schools across the nation and across the world. And that's why we have this five and 10 goal. What that means is in 10 years, we wanna be reaching five times the number of people that we reach now. That's what five and 10 is. So as recent, maybe even as last year, two years ago, what I used to say is not only that we don't believe there's a place that doesn't need the work that we do, but this idea that after working with thousands and thousands of children, and not just here in the US, but internationally as well, that I believe that we all want peace because I have never met a child who didn't want peace. And when you break through the pain, when you break through the hurt, they all want peace. And that makes me believe that all adults want peace as well, that we have we have more baggage than children, so we're more distant from that desire. But that deep down, we all want peace. But I look at it differently now, because in the past couple years, especially that's this last year, we've been working with a lot more adults, and in a lot more settings, very different than what I had been accustomed to. We've been working in corporate settings. And what I've learned through doing that 
is that that desire is not so distant at all. It is right there. As you heard from Lindsay, it is right there. What she described, what that happened, that took four hours. It was a four hour workshop because people were so open to what we teach, but not just open, they were hungering for it. And seeing so many people being so open to what we're teaching and in hungering for what we're teaching shows me that we do all want peace. Now, I'm not saying that mosaic is the only way to get to peace, but I do believe that it is one pathway to get there, and it's one that we know works. So we are inviting you to help us get on board, get on this journey with us for the long haul, and help us go far, help us reach the top of that pyramid. Thank you.